Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Dyson and Charles, because today is the 1st of June 2020. So, yep, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this recorded session, because uh, unfortunately for this week, I will have to run these videos in recorded format. So, basically, as we had it uh, previously, um, but again, uh, like I said, this is going to be a temporary measure. Um, but for now, hopefully, you can guys understand. Um, but yeah, like I said, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Traders Espresso. As always, we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, a few of the charts, by the way, that we looked at on Friday just to see how everything kind of got along. And uh, yeah, before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimers. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so uh, now then, uh, s before we jump in into the charts, um, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JFD Bank website, and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to uh, visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. You can also sign up for our uh, strategic report, which we produce every Monday. So yep, uh, feel free to do that, guys. Um, now then, um, quick update on what's happening here globally. So, yep, as you can see, the unfortunately, the amount of figures uh, continues to rise and we have surpassed the 6 million mark. Um, and, of course, uh, for now, I mean, the, the leaderboard here in terms of total uh, amount of cases, total cases and uh, total deaths is still U.S. Um, in terms of uh, confirmed cases followed by Brazil, Russia and then the United Kingdom where in terms of deaths, uh, well, it's U.S., United Kingdom, Italy and Brazil. And as you can see, Brazil kind of surpassed um, France, which surpassed Spain and also yep, uh, surpassed both of them. So Yep, not very good there, uh, the situation there. So we'll continue monitoring this. I mean, if we look at the daily cases, you can see that the uh, spike here on the 30th of, uh, on, uh, on Saturday, we had the highest amount of uh, cases confirmed. So basically, um, as you can see, this is, of course, well, of course, not very good, but um, I hope you guys are all staying safe um, and protected. So uh, hopefully, hopefully, we're still hoping that the number will eventually start sliding lower. Because for now, I mean, it's, it seems that yes, uh, it's it keeps on moving up and down, up and down. However, with the uh, with the trajectory to the upside, unfortunately. Now then, let's have a look at what's happening with the markets here. Um, the markets continued. Well, on Friday we saw the uh, the German DAX uh, drifting lower, and this is exactly what I was talking about last week, basically where I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this barrier here, the the 200-day EMA, and the areas just slightly uh, above this 200-day EMA near the 11,770, 11,845 zone. As you can see, uh, the index drifted higher, and last week on Thursday it tested this area, but then on Friday it it moved back down and basically kind of worked out nicely in uh, with this idea here so uh, don't get me wrong the, the German market is closed today due to with Monday and uh, yep it's a public holiday there so um, so yep uh, for now uh, basically we, yeah, we will have this one closed however we'll keep an eye on some other indices but this is the idea this is the scenario that we're still keeping in mind where uh, if the uh, index drifts a little bit lower but still remains above this barrier somewhere here the 11,236 then yep we could see another push higher um, now jumping into another index and this is the FTSE 100 now last week it seemed that yes we could push further north however 
as you can see, this barrier here, the one of the levels that I talked about, the 6,231, acted as a very strong area of resistance. And uh, you can see that the uh, on Friday, the index sold off and drifted back below this uh, 6,151 territory, which is the highest point of April, uh, which in a way kind of creates a bit of a a bit of a bearish atmosphere here. However, of course, uh, we'll uh, we're I'm not well, we're not really uh, going for that bearishness yet because um, still uh, we are still above this barrier, above this level, the 5,962, because that's the area that I was talking about uh, last week. In order, uh, the level a break of which we would require in order to consider maybe slightly lower levels, because um, this would also place the price below the 21-day EMA and kind of increase the chances of a potential move higher. And if we look at the cash index right now, we can see that the uh, the price is is trying to climb back up here. It's trying to move back towards the 6,151 territory. Um, however, um, we will, like I said, we will stay careful here because it's still below this below this barrier. So we would like to see another push back above this area, back above the 6,151 zone, 52 territory, um, in order to consider um, in order to consider higher levels. However, uh, for now, well, for now, it probably still the more cautious approach would be to wait for a break above the uh, this this high, this this high of 10th of March and the high of last week near the 6,231 zone, and uh, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high, and more buyers could be joining in. So that's why, guys, for now, uh, be very careful with this one. And uh, yep, let's see how if 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 the if the index can continue pushing further north. Of course, uh, still don't get me wrong, the short term trend is still to the upside. So in a way, it has more chances for, to drift higher. Um, however, let's wait for those confirmation breaks because uh, we want to be uh, on the safe side. Um, now then jumping into gold, um, gold is moving nicely to the upside last week, as you can see, on, uh, on Friday, it broke above this downside line. I talked about this area last week and uh, basically it moved uh, it moved above this uh, above this downside line, so kind of this way, increasing the chances of a potential further move north. This is exactly what we're going to do right now. We're going to target we're going to target higher levels. Um, as you can see, it also moved above this. 1723 zone and uh, the next target for us is around the 1748 zone um, so yep keep your eyes on that one um, and uh, yep uh, it will be quite interesting to see if we can overcome this barrier this is the the highest point of April by the way but as you can see in May it also acted as a good area of resistance as it failed to close at, at least a daily candle above this above this barrier above the 1748 zone so in a way, if you want to look at it this way, um, the that level, the 1748, could add a bit more uh, confirmation for the bulls here um, if we, if it would get broken. So um, yes, the fact that we've managed to push above the 1723 zone, that's of course uh, that's a good po positive sign. So this could continue for pushing further north. Um, however, as I said, like uh, for those who are more on the cautious side, you could also wait for a push. You can go. We can go slowly on this one, step by step. So um, the a break above the 1748 zone, yes, could increase the chances of a potential move further north towards, towards the 1763 zone. But if that fails to withhold now, um, of course, we do have some levels above it. And like, for example, the 1795 zone, roughly around here, that's the um, that's the all-time high, or sorry, not, not sorry, not the all-time high, but that's the highest point of 2012. So uh, something to keep in mind, guys, uh, could be a nice potential target. Of course, slightly above that, we do have that psychological 18 hundred level which could get tested but let's probably get back to a reality here and uh, let's wait for a maybe a push above the 1748 zone it's it's for those who are more on the cautious side because again like I said for now it seems that the the commodity is commodity is willing to move further north so yep uh, yep for now like I said we are gonna be somewhat bullish and uh, we'll aim for higher levels. In terms of the downside, we would prefer to wait for a drop below the 1680-81 zone here, um, or even better, maybe we could start looking at some lower levels if the 
if the commodity drops below this low, the low of last week, which is roughly around this 1694 zone here. And uh, a drop below this would confirm a forthcoming lower low. And the yep, the next target could be around the 1682 zone, as I said. But again, the break of that level could open the door towards further declines and uh, like levels, for example, 1645 could be met. And as you can see, it acted as this level here, the 1645 acted as a very good area of resistance and support at the same time. So, um, yep, uh, could be a nice target. But again, the downside is slightly off the table. Um, of course, don't get me wrong, you can keep an eye on the goal. It will be quite interesting to see. We, could, we do have the a, a very busy week um, uh, this week. So let's see if the gold can uh, play the role of a safe haven because uh, especially on Friday, as you can, as you know, if you follow the cal calendar, we do have the uh, we do have the NFPs, the US NFPs, and uh, uh, and of course a bunch of data that's coming out this week as well. The US ISM manufacturing uh, PMI and figures which are coming out today, so keep your eyes on those. Um, but of course, yeah, the main focus will fall on the um, on the US NFPs on Friday, so keep your eyes on that, guys. Um, now then, jumping into uh, Brent Oil uh, very quickly here, so you can see that the commodity managed to push above this uh, this downside line and managed to close the daily candle above this uh, 36.10 zone I kept talking about this level uh, last week and in a way that all this kind of increases the chances of a potential push further north now let's say from the very, very short term perspective, we are now targeting this level right here, which is around the 100 EMA. And that's the area near the 39.60 zone, which is marked by the high of the 11th of March. Um, so this could be a very nice target. And uh, in a way, uh, if it pushes higher, but let's say fails to move above this uh, 39.60 level straight away, we could see maybe a small setback here small correction to the downside maybe towards this 36.10 zone again which could provide support and then if it if it continues to provide support we could see a nice rebound and a push higher again uh, because our main target for now is around the 45.20 so that's uh, could be that's the low of the uh, 6th of March and uh, slightly above that we do have the 200 day EMA but we'll get to that if we get this strong move higher uh, for now we'll take it like I said we'll be very careful and uh, we'll keep an eye on this but uh, for now, we are leaning a little bit more to the upside um, towards this uh, 39.60 zone. So let's keep an eye on that one. In terms of the downside, we would like to wait for maybe a drop somewhere below the 32.21 zone and then aim for lower areas. So keep your eyes on that one, guys. Ethereum. So a bit of excitement in the crypto world. And uh, on Friday, well, last week, I talked about this one in the beginning of this week, in the beginning of last week. And I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this little pattern here, uh, especially clearly visible on the four hour chart, this uh, triangle formation. And I was saying what I was saying that we needed to see a violation of one of these uh, sides before uh, considering, uh, let's say a further directional move. And as you can see, we managed to break the, the the upper side of this triangle and then we had a push above the 211.50 uh, mark which is the high of the 23rd of May um, and in a way this kind of increased the chances of a turn for the for a further move higher and uh, then my uh, what I was mentioning as well that my next target is around the 227.50 mark which is the highest point of April and as you can see on Saturday we had a blast off here and we've managed to violate uh, this this key important level we overcame the uh, the highest point of April and uh, then on Sunday we drifted a little lower however this level now pr uh, acted as a very strong area of support from which as you can see this morning we're having a nice push back to the upside however of course the big question now is um, can it overcome the uh, the high of last week um, if it can the next target for us will be the high uh, the highest point of March which is around the 252.50 zone and then after that we'll of course take it from there but of course for uh, this is like I said good news for the buyers 
the crypto managed to explode here uh, to the upside and uh, well overcame the um, this key important level the 227.50 zone so now it kind of uh, like I said increases the chances of a potential further move uh, north in terms of the downside well we would like to see this one shifting back below the 227.50 uh, zone here or even maybe dropping back below this area right here the high of the 18th of May um, uh, which is around the 217 mark and then yep we could uh, aim for some lower levels but again for now uh, let's keep an eye on this one and uh, let's keep an eye on the 217 mark uh, but that's like I said only in terms of the downside because for now uh, if this 227.50 territory continues to provide support this kind of could lead more to the upside um, now then, jumping into a few pairs. Now AUD USD. I talked about this one last week, and look at this beautiful move here this morning. We are popping above this key important area of resistance uh, near the 0 0.6677 mark, which uh, acted as a very good area of support here back in August, September, October, and also it acted as a good area of resistance uh, on the uh, well the, uh, on in March here. Uh, it kind of is near the highest point of March. So in a way, for now. We are leaning a little bit more to the upside, and of course, our main target will be um, will be around here, the 0 0.7032. However, uh, before that, it could hit the 0 0.6934 mark, uh, which is the high of the 16th of January, and then yes, we could aim for uh, for higher levels here. But uh, for now, like I said, yes, uh, let's aim for uh, some some of these higher levels. Of course, like I said, our main target is around the 0 0.7032, uh, which is the highest point of uh, December here, uh, the highest point of December 2019. Um, but uh, yep, before that we could hit the 0 0.6934 zone. So let's see how this is going to play out. Um, in terms of the downside, we would prefer to wait for a drop below this level here, the 0 0.65 territory, somewhere, somewhere around here. This would of course already place the rate below the 21-day EMA, and further declines could be possible. Um, quick um, update on NZD CAD. To be honest, um, uh, not much has changed here from my last analysis. And uh, basically, uh, what I talked about last week was that. Um, in a way, yes. Even even if we get a break below this, or, or sorry, break above this downside line here, this long-term downside resistance line, uh, still we would prefer to wait for a push above the 0 0.8576 zone here, in order to aim for higher levels, because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high, and more buyers could be joining in. Um, of course, ideally, don't get me wrong, we would prefer to see a nice daily close above this area, because we don't want to see something that we had last week here, where we, we had these false breakouts and. Uh, basically then the pair, the pair still kind of drifted back down so uh, that's why we would like to wait for a daily close above this area above the 0 0.85 75 76 zone here and then aim for higher levels uh, the next target for us is around the 0 0.87 38 zone which is the highest point of march so keep your eyes on down in terms of the downside now uh, we'll probably take uh, well we'll wait for a uh, drop uh, back below this downside line and back uh, and the, below the the low of last week which is roughly around the 0 0.8487 zone so keep your eyes on this one guys uh, USD JPY now here the uh, situation is a little bit difficult here um, so it's uh, it's drifting back below this short-term upside support line however as I've mentioned last week it was a bit tentative so in a way we cannot focus on it too much uh, because again as you can see this pair continues to move a little bit sideways here uh, roughly between the 107.32 zone on the downside and on the upside below this key important bar uh, at 108.08 so basically it's stuck in this little uh, little narrow range um, and in a way what we're gonna do of course we're gonna wait for a, a violation of this little uh, this little range of, or should I say what the boundaries of this little range before we could examine a further directional move because for now, um, it's a little bit tricky. I mean, uh, although although the yen is uh, not the strongest one right now, however, the U.S. dollar is also on the weaker side. So, how, but again, as I said, keep your eyes on the data, guys. Today, um, we do have, like I said, the, we do have the U.S. Um, ISM figures coming out. Uh, USM, uh, U.S. Um, 
uh, let me just double check this very quickly. Yes, the uh, U.S. manufacturing uh, ISM, U.S. ISM manufacturing figures, uh, PMI's figures coming out. So keep your eyes on those. Of course, those are expected to have improved slightly from the previous ones. So if the previous one was sitting at around 41.5, the expectation for this one is for at 43. However, so if we if the figure comes out better than the forecast, we could see a nice pop here, uh, an, an emotional kind of outburst, I would say, because we could see a move, maybe a move higher. However, uh, be very careful because, uh, like I said, the dollar could still uh, be under pressure as the figures, although the figure could come out better than the forecast um still it might be below the 50 mark so we, we would still be in contraction um in, in contraction territory so basically still not everything is that good in the um in the u.s economy so um and another thing from the technical side here on usd and usd jpy is the fact that um if this barrier continues to provide resistance the 108.08 level we and if this this pair starts dropping below these this 107.32 zone from uh, below this lower side of the uh, the narrow range here this could of course this would of course increase the chances of a potential uh, drift lower and basically this would confirm potentially could confirm that the pair is in a slightly wider range uh, roughly between these two highlighted areas as you can see here so and that's why guys for now uh we'll be very careful uh we'll be very cautious and uh, uh we'll keep an eye on these two levels because like i said uh for now it's a little bit tricky because uh, neither of these pair neither of these currencies are on the stronger side uh us dollar against the canadian dollar as you can see here this is a clear indication of the um, the weakness of the dollar and of course the little strengthening of the canadian dollar because of the rising uh, oil prices so that that's what's boosting boosting this pair uh, or that's what's boosting the Canadian dollar and pushing the this pair lower and as you can see the the pair is now kind of uh, violating again violating this 1.3734 territory so in a way it could incre uh, it could continue drifting further south the our uh, yeah last week I talked about this one and what I was mentioning that um, our next target is near this uh, 200 day EMA which could in a way provide temporary support but if it fails to do so then yep uh, the pair could drift further down and towards the 1.3465 465 zone which is marked by the high of the uh, 28th of February so keep your eyes on this one for now we are more bearish than bullish on this one uh, for us to let's say get excited about higher levels well we would probably prefer now and let me just adjust this very quickly uh, we would probably prefer to wait for a break of this downside line and a push above the high of uh, the 22nd of May which is around the 1.4048 uh, zone of course we'll keep an eye on that psychological 140 zone so you can start looking at higher levels after a break of that one but just for that extra confirmation a push above the 1.4048 could do the trick for more buyers and finally your usd so this one has worked out perfectly so this one uh, managed to reach my target here that i kept talking about uh for quite a while the 1.1147 and um now basically the um of course this could continue pushing further north like i said we are we are going to keep an eye on the data uh that's coming out this week we do have a quite an eventful day uh, quite an, event, an eventful week i would say um we do have the german unemployment numbers later on this week and the uh, uh european service versus PMI, uh, PMI's figures with, together with the Eurozone, uh, Eurozone unemployment rate. So, yep. Uh, and of course, a bunch of US data, which I've mentioned already. So keep your eyes on those, uh, on that. Um, and uh, for now, of course, from the technical side, um, let's keep an eye on this level. Let's keep an eye on this barrier, the 1.1147, but uh, something tells me that this could get violated and uh, soon, and we could see a nice push higher. However, it, the, mm, uh, the pair might uh, fail to kind of or should I say if it might drift a little bit higher maybe test the 1.12 territory 1.1237 zone which is marked by the high of the 16th of March and maybe then could retrace back down so something maybe like this could be possible let me just quickly put this one on the chart so uh, so yeah 
uh, for now, uh, for now, like I said, we are going to be aiming for slightly higher levels, but only up until here somewhere, uh, up until this territory. And uh, it, in a way, if it finds somewhere resistance around here, then uh, we may see a bit of drift back down, where this level now could play the role of the of, of a good support zone, the 1.1147. But of course, if it if it drops even below this, um, if it drifts back down here, still there is still there is a possibility for the uh, for the bulls to step in somewhere around here near the 1.1039 zone I talked about this level or near this 200 day EMA so we'll keep an eye on both um, however if the pair starts falling sharply back down and falls below the 1.0990 zone then well not everything is good in the bull block so yep we'll keep an eye on that guys so so yeah, that's the kind of, uh, like I said, the outlook. Once again, guys, I do apologize for uh, not running this one uh, live. As I said, uh, I unfortunately, uh, for this week, uh, I have to jump back into this mode and the recorded session uh, mode and uh, yep but like I said hopefully everything is going to be okay um, but yeah I hope you guys stay safe I hope you guys guys enjoy uh, enjoy today's uh, today's trading day uh, like I said for those who are trading the German markets uh, uh, well remember that the, uh, the the German market is closed today so uh, but the other ones are open so keep your eyes uh, keep your eyes on that one uh, the German market is closed, and the um, the Swiss, Norwegian, and uh, New Zealand uh, markets are yep closed today. So just to kind of let you know, guys. So. Like I said, guys, thank you very much for, you know, for watching, for listening, for, you know, for, I really appreciate all your views, guys. So, yep, uh, really thank you very much for your support. And uh, I hope you found this video, this, I hope you found it useful, this video. And if you want to catch my uh, recorded uh, session uh, later on, my traders uh, tea time, as always, 1315 GMT. For now, guys, I hope you have a beautiful trading day, and I'll see you later. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.